Hello! People sure do love collecting bits of cardboard. These days they're all collectible card games like Magic the Gathering and Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh and Sprek Ziggler Alpha and all your favourites, but back in the day, the day being late 70s, early 80s, they were generally just um, bits of cardboard with a photo of a film or something on the front and on the back some writing, and everyone was happy, except the people paying for them, who were usually the parents. And they came with a bit of bubble gum because why not? And well, we're going to be looking at mostly movie tie-in ones from back in the day, as I say, because I've been scouring eBay for them, and some people have sent them in, so thank you if you did that. And we shall be starting with eight cards of The Dark Crystal, full colour trading cards. Uh, Piers Morgan getting an early start there. Yes, The Dark Crystal was a very, very cool uh, puppet film by the Jim Henson Studios, I believe, back in the early 80s. What year? 1982, the cards are from, so we'll say that. Distributed by the Don Russ Company, Memphis, Tennessee, 38101. Thanks for that, lads. Um, yeah, it's a really good film, from what I remember. Quite spooky. The Skeksis, the aliens in it, like sort of emaciated vulture things, are quite unpleasant and will give you flashbacks to primary school. But anyway, let's see what they're like. I'm hoping cool pictures of cool things. We've got rounded corners. That's a rarity, more like playing cards or something. And ooh, no bubble gum. That's interesting. I thought these always came with bubble gum. Well, proves what I know. So, yeah, they are set up quite um, playing cardy. I must say, though, it's very low quality card. You can see where it's just come off the uh, punch there, and yeah, it's it's really thin for trading cards, really thin. These things wouldn't last five minutes. So what have we got anyway? One of the Gelflings there, who are slightly uncanny valley, um, long-snouted people, and one of the Skeksis having a bit of a, well, cop hold of it, probably capturing it from what I remember. I must watch it. I got it on Blu-ray again the other week. Kira's capture. Climbing up through the sewers, Jen and Kira again come face to face with the disgraced Chamberlain. When his renewed promise of friendship is rejected once more, he attempts to kill Jen, then drags Kira to the council chamber. I would really hope people saw the film before getting these, because that's quite a hefty spoiler. In fact, that's probably put some of you off watching it. Go and watch it anyway, it's cool. Look, it's got that in it. What more do you bloody want? What else have we got? Ooh. Yep, a very old Skeksis, I'd presume by that. The Gartham Master. Humiliated by the Gartham's failure to correctly carry out his command. Oh, blimey. Yep, that's looking a bit rotten. That's like something you've just found behind your grand's cupboards that died there. Well, probably by the time these cards were printed. Then we've got... Oh, blimey. Uh, I think that is the mighty Gelflings there. So there's some wings going on. I don't remember them having wings. Have they been grabbed hold of by an insect or that? Flight to safety. Just as menacing Gartham claws grasp at them, Kira wraps her arms tightly around Jen and jumps into the ravine. To Jen's amazement, so they do not drop but float gently through the air on a pair of wings that have unfolded from Kira's back. Oh, I don't remember that. And again, massive spoilers, yeah. What have we got here? Ugh. Oh my god. Slightly worrying, and there's, there's some sort of dark thing on the side I can't quite make it. What's the deal there? Land Strider Assault. Oh, I've got to watch this film again, man. How cool is that? Looks like, um, yeah, terrifying, skeletal, pallid, albino, killer, moth, Jeff, monkey. I don't know. A lot of these are just very slightly out of focus shots of the Skeksis, I've noticed. Here's another one. The Skeksis Ritual Master. Here's another one. This one is the uh, Skeksis Slave Master. Man, there's a lot of them. Ah, here we are. Here's the friendly fraggle type thing with the long hair. I remember that one. Uh, that is the Mystics and the Dark Crystal. That will be one of the Mystics, presumably. And here's more of the Mystics going to the castle, apparently. You can just imagine the puppeteers struggling under the weight of all that latex as they go along. And that's the Dark Crystal, and I've got to say, not very impressed. Uh, no bubble gum, only eight cards, and they're very thin. I would hope that they were um, sold in, well, very cheaply, frankly. It's got the same wax paper on as most cards, but that's your lot. Anyway, now it's time for Dune. Hello, Carl McLaughlin. We remember you in blue velvet. What fun that was. Trading cards and stickers with bubble gum. Ten cards, one sticker, one stick of gum. Marvellous. Now, Dune, obviously massively successful uh, set of sci-fi novels, and David Lynch was bizarrely allowed to direct a version of it in the early 80s. What year are we looking at here? Uh, doesn't say. That's annoying. Um, I'm going to guess at 1984. There. If it's not correct, you can moan at me in the comments. Anyway, yes, a uh, big science fiction epic. They were hoping for a sort of Star Wars vibe. But really, the books don't quite lend themselves to that. And, uh, yeah, it's it's not... 
It's not a great film, to be brutally honest. It's not particularly bad. There's a lot of uh, interesting visual stuff and nice bits in it, but it doesn't hold together that well, and the whole thing's a bit of a mess at the end. Incidentally, if you're after a documentary to watch, I heartily recommend something called Jodorowsky's Dune, where, um, well, the director Jodorowsky was trying to make a version for years, and his sounded fucking batshit insane, um, to an unbelievable extent. What he was doing... I mean, changing sort of huge amounts of the book to this weird thing. I can't even begin to describe how bizarre it would have been. It would have been a hell of a thing. I don't think it would have been actually a very good film, uh, objectively, but it would have certainly been visually interesting. And what he was doing with um, how one of the characters was conceived still uh, evades knowledge to this day. Oh, here's the bubblegum from many years ago. Oh, God. It's, it's, ugh. it's like... Ugh. Oh, look at the dust coming off here. It's like... Ugh, dried flesh, jerky of death. Anyway, what do we get? We get, uh, you know, apparently trading cards and stickers. Ten cards, one sticker and one sticker gum. Oi, eight crappy cards, and these are the proper ones as well. Look, here's a sticker of everybody's favourite, Beast Rabin. A sweaty man who looks like he's escaped from an 80s sitcom. Marvellous. Just what everybody wants to stick on their folders at school. I was just going to make a joke about everybody wanting a Beast Rabin action figure, but actually there was one. And on the back is Alia. Spooky child wearing a cog. Thanks for that. What have we got? The Fia Sada car attack in this incredibly indistinct image. Thanks, lads. What's on the back? Sada car rush out of a Harkonnen ship. Through their masks, we see faces come screaming toward us. Good for you. Something to do with it. Rabin tears off Dr. Kine's still suit. Well, that's just rude. A lot of Rabin going on here. Um, what else? Unpacking in the Great Hall. Seriously, that's one of the most exciting cards you could give us, lads. Um, two giant glow globes drift into the... Uh, oh good, Rabin's back again! I'd hate to think we'd miss out on him for five minutes. And there he is with Fayed, who is uh, played by Sting, as you can probably tell there, the tantric musician -y type. Then we've got Entering the Ornithopter. Well, it's more interesting than entering the fucking Great Hall, I suppose. Ooh, Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mohayim. Ugh, spooky. Urgh. She has some sort of horrible um, box that made you think your skin was peeling off or something. And if you took your hand out of it too quick, she stuck a needle in your neck and killed you. I've probably got confused with another character now. I haven't seen the film for years. But anyway, Paul addresses the Fremen. Hello, Fremen. Now, we're very disappointed, and I'm very upset I've got to say this, but somebody has been leaving the bathrooms in quite a state. Um, you know, this is basic stuff, guys. You are, you know, not just letting yourselves down, you're letting the whole of the Fremen down. We don't want to see any more of it. Also, calisthenics on Thursday is cancelled. Baron Harkonnen receives his treatment. Oh my god, a lot of ginger people going on there. I forget where his treatment was. I think it involved just some sort of grotesque thing where they were sticking lots of pins in boils or something like that. A brilliant red colour marks the Fedakin. Ooh, very bright eyes there. And yes... He's put his hands in the jam and ruined it for everyone. And the Baron enters the throne room. Good for him. Well, I've got to say, they're not... You know, some of those cards are not the most interesting of stuff. I imagine they were doing too many stickers if they had really had to make one of a sweaty-looking beast rabbin. But there you go. And, uh, yeah, entering the Great Hall is really just not something you really need to uh, see. I suppose it's quite nice if you want to see how the set was made. But again, you'd probably want one without all that bloody mist in the way. Well, let's put that bubblegum to one side, and probably try it later because I'm fucking mental, and have a look at Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Not to be confused with Close Encounters of the Turd Grind, which is a horrible thing I just made up. Photo, movie cards, extra sticker in every pack with one stick of bubblegum. 1978, these ones. That is many, many moons ago. This is a film. Richard Dreyfus is in it, if I remember, and there's a lot of alien stuff. They're calling to him. They're calling to other people. They go and see the aliens, and at one point he makes a mountain out of mashed potato. That's about all I can remember of this film. But, oh God. Uh, we might have to uh, bail quickly on... Oh, my giddy aunt. The, um, yeah. Oh, the bubblegum has just disintegrated into... Oh, I think it's got lots of mould on it, actually, yeah. Probably won't be trying that one, then. Let's put that to one side. My God. So that's what bubblegum from 1978 looks like. Right, special offer. What is the special offer? I can't see it, because it's all stuck together. Go on. Here we are. A must for every sci-fi fan, in inverted commas. A thrill for all collectors. Printed on sturdy paper, a giant 21 by 27 full-colour sheet showing 66 action scenes. Wow. It's, I think, what we in the trade call a poster, by the sounds of it. Anyway, oh, now this is an interesting one where you get to build a picture from the cards on the back. 
although unfortunately they don't all seem to have it. Um, it's a very industrial sort of card, this one. Yeah, hmm. Not the most fascinating when you've only got a few of them. Oh, I'll get a blue blob. Oh no, it's a black blob. My day is ruined. So what we got then? We have a sticker. It is of the spaceship and lots of rotten bubble go on it. Thanks for that. Um, Gillian and her son observe the incredible event. Do, 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 do. Or notes similar to that that I've forgotten. What's on the back of these? Oh yeah, that. We've already looked. Releasing abducted humans from the past. Stop abducting people. It's very impolite. Display of cosmic beauty. Or quite early but quite pretty special effects. Image of the Devil's Tower. Oh, the child's making them there look. Making it out of mud, because his dad's used all the mashed potato. Gillian hides from military copters! Good for her. More fun than Zumba. And what have we got on the front? Strange disturbances caused by the UFOs. And Gillian Guyler searches for her little boy. And yeah, we couldn't get one in focus, so we went for that. Thanks. Oh, movie facts. Julia Phillips, producer of Close Encounters, says, What Michael Phillips and I admire most about Steven Spielberg's work is that he makes movies about people. People with whom audiences can identify. In Encounters, the principal man is really every man. That's not a movie fact. That's a quote from somebody promoting the film. Steven Spielberg, the director of Close Encounters of the Third Kind, has been a fan of science fiction since his childhood in Phoenix, Arizona. At age 16, he created a two-and-a-half-hour, eight-millimeter movie called Firelight, which is all about scientists investigating weird lights in the sky. Gee, pity he never did anything with that. Oh, wait, there's that film. Um, well, they're all right. A lower quality card than the um, rather nice Dune ones. But at least you get some bubblegum and there's a sticker and all bits and bobs. You're letting the side down, Dark Crystal. Anyway, that's enough of the old ones and the bubblegum and that. And just a little extra at the end. I think, some, if I recall correctly, I was given this at one of the comic conventions by somebody. The inaugural edition of President Obama! Trading cards and stickers. Yes, apparently they now will make trading cards about bloody anything. Hey, look, there's a new president. Let's make them about him. How does that work? Collect all one. I've got Obama. Great. Good work. So it's just like hundreds of different pictures of him or something? I don't know. Let's open it up and find out. Collect all 90 cards and 18 stickers. I probably won't bother. Not a massive fan of collecting pictures of politicians. So what have we got? Sharing a historic moment with Obama kissing his wife's nose. And there we are again talking about things on the back. Round one in Oxford. Oxford? Oh yes, okay, the University of Mississippi in Oxford. That'll be in Oxford in America. I was going to say, what on earth are they doing um, American election stuff in the UK? It looks like he's about to use a Jedi mind trick in a very dark room. Welcome back, Obama. Here he is, relationships built on the self-interest. And he's drawing lines of um, all the self-interest that will happen when he's elected, because you get shot if you don't, is my understanding. Welcome back, Obama. Not as good as welcome back, Cotter, but we'll leave it to him. <laughs> That is really odd, that one, isn't it? I love Obama. So, well, I think from that we can assume that these were very much pitched at fans of President Obama as opposed to people with a political interest, because um, they probably wouldn't want to uh, stake their claim out for any specific person, I wouldn't have thought. Oh, well, at least it's a sticker. Gone but not forgotten. Change is coming. And Kennedy's for Obama. That's really weird. Um. I, that's a, such a strange thing to exist. I wonder how many people over the world actually collected all of those. I wonder if anybody was swapping those in the schoolyard. I don't know. Oh well, I'm off to make my Henry Kissinger collectible collection. Maybe I could have one of really obscure British Prime Ministers from the 1800s or something. Anyway, enough of this nonsense. I'm going to try some 1980s bubblegum. Forgive me if I don't try the one from the 70s covered in frickin' mould, but I don't fancy dying. Yeah, this is just... It smells of literally nothing. Uh, it feels like, well, nothing. And, uh, mm, yeah, it's like... Ugh. Ugh. I, can, I can't describe it as any sort of food stuff. It's coming across more as something that, I don't know, a chest of drawers was once made out of. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, it's crumbling to dust. Um. Ah. Oh, God. Whatever chemical in it that makes it bubblegum... Ah, it's disappeared over the years. And it's, oh, there's nothing bubblegummy left about it. It is just crumbled to a horrible dust that tastes of rot. This may have been a mistake. <clears throat> right, I'm off to empty my mouth out. Bye. And yes, if you were wondering, that was even worse than the garbage pail kid stuff that time. Thanks for watching.